Hello, mathematical friends. Today, I want to talk about the euler mascheroni constant, gamma. What exactly is this constant? Where does it come from? We won't do any proofs for today. I just want to talk about it and give you a kind of imaginative picture about gamma, what it is and what it does. If you look up euler mascheroni constant in a book somewhere, you will probably see something like this. But what does this mean? Uh, where does it come from? What's the motivation behind this? That's what I'm going to examine today. Incidentally, if you want to perform this calculation numerically, this is what you will get. This is the decimal value of the euler mascheroni constant. Uh, you might wonder about these digits. Do they repeat themselves? That's an interesting question. And, uh, well, I might talk a little bit about that at the end. But to me, what makes this interesting, what makes gamma interesting, is that it has a very natural connection to the theory behind infinite series. First, let's look at the infinite geometric series, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed, and this is 1 can write it like this. 1, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, and so on and so on. The uh, obvious question is, does this amount to something? Does this have a sum or does it go off to infinity? And as you know, it does have a sum. So the question we're trying to answer here is, does this thing, k is 1 to infinity, 1 over 2 k minus 1, does this equal to something? That's not infinity. And to have a more rigorous understanding of what this question means, we introduce the following concept. Partial sums, it's like the most important idea in the study of series. All right, so what is a partial sum? Well, we take this, okay, pieces of the series. This one, uh, let's use a different color. And then this one, see? I take the first, the, then the, the first two, and then the first three, and then the first four, and so on, and I add them up like this. Okay, the first partial sum is here, second one, third, fourth, and now I can ask, well, where does this go? What is the limit of this? So the partial sum Sn is the sum k is 1 to n, 1 over 2 k minus power k minus 1. So I'm not actually dealing with an infinite series, uh, which uh, the reasoning about such things could be flawed, but I'm dealing with a finite partial sum, and then I'm taking the limit uh, of this partial sum. The limit is what? Okay, as n goes to infinity. And this is actually what the, the sum of my series is that's like the formal understanding of what it means to sum an infinite series. It's the limit of the partial sums. Let me write that down. There, I'll repeat that again. The sum of an infinite series is the limit of the partial sums Sn. It's a very important concept. We will need it for uh, the next uh, bunch of videos. So here are the first few. S1 is 1, S2 is 3 halves, S3 is 7 over 4. What is S10? So let's jump up to S10. That's 1023 over 512. Very interesting. So you notice that all of them are less than 2, and they seem to approach 2. This one is getting closer to 2, and this one very close to 2, and so on. But as you know from the theory about uh, geometric uh, series, we know that the limit of S of n as n goes to infinity, this is 2. Okay, and that means for our original series, our original infinite series, yeah, it does have a sum, that sum is 2. So that's what it means to sum an infinite number of terms, the limit of the partial sums. Now, we are in great danger of making an erroneous conception. And it's the following idea. Suppose I have an infinite series, ak, k is 1 to infinity. And like the one we've been dealing with, suppose ak is decreasing. 
And we can actually say, we can use a mathematical term. Let's say AK is monotone decreasing, like something like this, one, one half, one, one fourth. Yeah, these are decreasing, monotone decreasing. They're non-increasing, they never increase, they're always getting smaller or less than or equal. And we can also put this condition here. If we study the series we're talking about here, all these terms tend to zero. So the limit of AK goes to zero as K goes to infinity. We could see that here, 2K minus one, when K goes to infinity, well, this whole thing goes to zero. So we tend to, we can now make uh, an erroneous conclusion that any series like this has a sum. Okay, there. I, it almost pains me to write this down because this is so false. <laughs> okay, so we know that this is totally not true. I'm sure we've been through this. But what's interesting about this is that the counterexample, the most natural counterexample to this is the one that involves the euler mascheroni constant. So the most natural counterexample to this erroneous idea is something called harmonic series. And harmonic series, that's where the euler mascheroni constant comes from. The harmonic series is a very natural choice. We sum the reciprocals of the natural numbers. And we can write it like this. K is 1 to infinity. 1 over k. And so ak is 1 over k, and we see that ak is monotone decreasing, and also the limit as k goes to infinity, this limit, this is 0, obviously, because 1 over k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. So if we reason incorrectly, we are thinking that this has a a sum, but it doesn't. Let's look at the partial sums of this. One, one plus a half, one plus a half plus a third, and so on. And the nth partial sum is here like this. So let's compute some of these things numerically and see what it looks like. S1 is one, S2 is three halves, S3 is 11 over six. And you get this feeling that uh, this is growing bigger, but, mm, Let's see, let's try S10. What does that give us? 7,381 over 2,520, or about 2.929. Hmm, per perhaps we can plot this. Let's plot the SNs, the partial sums. That's what it looks like. Let's have a closer look at this. So this here is S1, this is S2, this is S3, and so on, Sn up here. The red dots are the partial sums. And this green line, I put this in here just for fun. This is log x, or log n, since I'm plotting here, n, the natural numbers. And the interesting thing is that this uh, curve, if I draw a line th or curve through these dots, it looks like log. Maybe not exactly like log, but it looks a lot like log. And what we can try to do is shift it upwards, move it up, and try to fit it as best as we can to the SN curve. So that's what we're going to do. We're, we will shift the green log N curve upwards to get as close as we can to get a good curve fit for this. Well, maybe I should just call this log x because we can interpolate all these values for log. Why not? This is a curve and those are discrete dots. All right, so we'll call this x. All right, let's see what we can do with that. So that's what I've done here. I've shifted this upwards exactly by a number gamma, the euler mascheroni constant. And I, I noticed that if I do that, then the fit over on this side when n is small, the fit is not so good, but the fit becomes very good when n is big. So we can say that this curve here, the green curve, the shifted log, 
fits well when n is large. That's incredibly beautiful. Uh, it's really amazing. This was discovered by Euler, and he computed uh, gamma, and we might do that in a future bit, maybe not long from now. This is a very interesting topic. There's some nice analysis in, involved in it. And this is where gamma comes from. It's the shift that you need to um, bring log into the best fit possible of the partial sums of the harmonic series. Now, log, log x plus gamma diverges. This goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. So if, if this indeed is true, then of course my harmonic sum also diverges. We know harmonic sum diverges. I will prove that in an upcoming video. And so this is a counterexample. This doesn't converge. There's partial sums diverge. So we, we do not have a sum for this series. So the limit of these partial sums is infinite. And so this does not have a finite sum. K is 1 to infinity, 1 over K. This is also, this is infinite, we can say. So, okay, uh, we will prove all these things in a future video. Right now, I just want to give you this really nice picture. Keep this in mind. This is what gamma is. All right, it's a very natural idea. I see these partial sums. I say to myself, hey, man, that looks exactly or very much like log, but log is in the wrong place. So let me shift it up a bit. And I shift it up by adding 0.57721566. And I get a very good fit that gets better and better and better. And that's gamma, the euler mascheroni constant. So now we can understand this definition. It's pretty clear now what, uh, what it means. When S, when N is large, okay, so when N approaches infinity, then this fit becomes better, closer and closer. So as N gets large, S N minus log N, uh, this comes closer and closer to gamma, yes? Or another way of looking at it is if I subtract off this, okay, like this, sorry, plus gamma, this goes to zero. Okay, the difference between the function log x plus gamma at the point x is n, uh, this difference between that and s of n goes to zero. And so therefore s n minus log n goes to gamma. And then, okay, we can write it as a limit. Now gamma is limit as n goes to infinity, s n minus log n. And that is this thing here. That's our definition here. So we understand now what euler mascheroni constant is. We have a picture in our minds. And it's a very interesting concept, very beautiful. And uh, well, there's uh, some interesting questions. Is gamma rational or irrational? And uh, I think the answer is no one knows yet. It hasn't been solved. We still don't know. But I think some guy proved that if it is rational, then the denominator has to be cosmically large. Of course, that's not enough to really prove that it's irrational, but we do know that, that, that if it is rational, then the fraction uh, that represents this is really massively cosmically huge. Well, there you go. Uh, I th hope you un enjoyed this. I really find this topic very interesting, and it's kind of an intro to a lot of uh, other videos that I want to do that I have planned. You know that when I was young, every time I saw the word Euler Mascheroni, I thought to myself about maraschino, like cherries. And every time I saw maraschino cherries, I thought Euler Mascheroni constant. So uh, it's kind of good to think about uh, math things when you see things around you. It's, uh, it's maybe a good thing <laughs> to have those kind of... Uh, uh, associations, you know. Well, I hope you like this, and I hope you will subscribe, and uh, I will see you next time.